Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for a moment of silence. From Homestead Media, this is HHS In-Depth. Today is Friday, September 15th, and we welcome you to another episode of HHS In-Depth. Let's begin today's show with a quick overview. Elena Baker kicks it off with a report on Homestead's Unified Flag Football Team and their progress this season. Next comes Carly Swymiller with a look into how you can take advantage of Homestead's diverse extracurricular opportunities. You'll hear from Jaron Ellis on why our math resource room changed locations again. Later on, Emily Adams has important information on how you can keep yourself safe while commuting to and from school, football games, and work as the days quickly get shorter and darker. Finally, I'll follow up with an update on the FCCLA's coffee bar, new location, and menu. Caroline Burns will be in later to give next week's forecast. And don't miss Matthew Otten wrapping up the show with an exciting report on Homestead Athletics in Down to the Wire. Stick around, this is HHS In-Depth. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. This is HHS In-Depth. I'm Sophia Rogelio. And I'm Taylor Ham. And Sophia, with temperatures starting to drop, I'm sure everyone is wondering if it's finally time to say goodbye to summer and head into fall. Well, don't ask me. Let's bring in our weather reporter, Caroline Burns, to let us know. Caroline, what will the weather be like tonight at the football game against Dwenger? Well, Sophia, kickoff tonight will be sunny, with temperatures in the low 70s, later falling to the mid 40s, so be sure to bring a sweatshirt. I'll be back later with the full weekend weather report. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for filling us in, Caroline. It sounds like I won't be leaving the house tonight without a jacket. Caroline will be back to give us a full week forecast a little later on in the show. HHS In-Depth, National News. And now let's shift our focus to national headlines. In recent national news, Hurricane Lee is making its way towards the United States. The hurricane was confirmed as a Category 3 on Thursday. The storm currently has a wind speed of 115 miles per hour, but is expected to weaken in the next few days. Lee is predicted to hit the northeast on Saturday morning this week. In other news, Monday marked the 22nd anniversary of 9-11, the day that the United States were attacked by terrorist hijackers in New York City, Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Nearly 3,000 people were killed and more than 6,000 left injured. President Biden spoke about his remembrance of the attack while visiting Alaska, saying, quote, I join you on this solemn day to renew our sacred vow. Never forget, end quote. The speech resulted in Biden facing criticism for not participating in traditional ceremonies, such as being at the White House, Pentagon, or in New York City when talking about the tragedy. Thank you, Taylor, for the national news update. Let's switch gears back to what's going on within the walls of Homestead. Recently, one of Homestead's fall athletic teams finally began their season. Unified Flag Football had their first home game last week against Warsaw. In now is reporter Elena Baker to give you the story on how their season is coming along so far. Unified sports have stepped up their game these past few years. Our flag football team has made an impactful mark on Homestead. But what does the sport truly entail? We practice every day after school um, for about an hour and the kids work really hard. We stretch, we get ready, throw around the football, we learn plays. Uh, my favorite practices is um, where we all can meet each other, we all can combine with our plays and stuff. Coach Hoffer shares with us why she chose flag football. In a previous job, I coached unified track, and so when I got to Homestead, um, I was really interested in getting involved in unified sports, and the um, unified flag football was new. So this is my fifth year coaching, um, and another coach and I started it five years ago, 
And we just have had so much fun and the program has really grown. All of the coaches and athletes truly enjoy all of the practices and games they get to experience. Just the relationships that I get to build with uh, the students. They're pretty amazing. I feel like I get to work with the best students at Homestead. And we have a lot of fun, but we work hard too. So it's a lot of um, discipline, um, but also a lot of like character that these kill kids build. My favorite part is about sport is where you can find and meet some new people that you never met in the school before. Our flag football team has been working incredibly hard this season. If you see any of the players in the hallways, be sure to congratulate them. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Elena Baker. Thank you for the story, Elena. Stick around, we'll be right back. How do you get involved in extracurriculars and what benefits do they hold? I'll tell you more about that later in the show. Tonight, the Homestead Spartans travel to Shields Field to take on the Saints in a Week 5 SAC matchup. Catch the game at 7 p.m. only on the Point 91 FM. Welcome back to HHS In Depth. Welcome back. The Riley Dance Marathon Club will be selling t-shirts for Red for Riley Night next week on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday during all lunches. Cash, check, and card will be accepted, and the cost is $15 for each shirt. Red for Riley Night is on Friday, September 22nd at the football game at home. All proceeds will go to Riley's Children's Hospital. Students and faculty are encouraged to wear the shirts to the Red for Riley football game next week. Are you interested in traveling? If so, you have a unique opportunity to join the Panama Adventure Trip for July 2024. You'll get the chance to go whitewater rafting, surfing, snorkeling, and partake in other equally exciting adventures. Please contact Mrs. Bush at the email address shown below for more information. Juniors and seniors, please see Mrs. Connerly in the 9th grade academy office to sign up for in-school college visits. There are a number of colleges visiting Homestead between now and the end of October. Interested in DECA? Their call-up meeting will be Thursday, September 21st after school in the cafeteria. If you're interested in hearing what DECA is all about, you'll want to attend this meeting. What did you do over the summer? Did you visit any cool places? Have any crazy adventures? The yearbook staff wants to hear about your experience and feature it in this year's yearbook. If you have any unique stories, photos, or experiences to share, please email Mrs. Barron at the email address shown here. Homestead academic teams will have a call-out meeting on Wednesday, September 20th in Mr. Cole Glacier's room, 5.20 immediately after school. Learn about the three academic teams, Spell Bowl in the fall, Quiz Bowl in the winter, and Super Bowl in the spring. You can participate in one or all three if you are interested. Get out to the meeting to learn more about it. If you can't make it to the meeting, email Mr. Cole Glacier at the email address shown here. If you have walked past the math resource room recently, you may have noticed it has moved locations. HHS in-depth reporter Jaron Ellis joins us now to tell us why. That's right, Sophia. The math resource room has moved from the math hallway to room 731. Many students as well as teachers are wondering why there's a sudden change to the location. The math resource room moved uh, for a couple of different reasons. We are getting ready to take a lot of our math classrooms and relocate them to the the new wing phase three. Once most of the math teachers are over in the new wing, if we if it's still where it is now in 731, it'll be a lot closer for those teachers to move back and forth when they do have their duty of being a teacher for a particular period. Another reason was there was a noise and a heating and cooling issue. If, you've, if, if students have been in the math resource room, they've known there's been some issues with both of those things. But yeah, eventually it's gonna move to one of the new classrooms. Mr. Zwerge did not give a date on when the math resource room will move to its permanent new location, but students should plan on heading the room 731 for the foreseeable future. Thank you for the update, Jaren. As we are constantly reminded that high school is the best four years of our lives, have you ever asked yourself if you believe it or not? Reporter Carly Swymiller is in now to tell us a few ways to help make that statement true for you. From student government to show choir, being involved in some form of extracurricular is a crucial part of high school, but knowing where to begin and what suits you best can be a struggle. Who better to ask than some of our involved Spartans? I'm in the Homestead Winter Guard and Color Guard. I'm really comfortable in it. It's made me a better person. It's made me more patient with people. 
It's made me have like this sense of myself that I never like knew I had before. I play three singles for the tennis team. I do unified track in the spring. I do interact club. I do business club as well. Instead of just going home right after school, I meet people at clubs and sports. It's a lot of fun. Everybody there's so nice. It's, it's a great atmosphere. There's a competitive edge without like too much pressure. It's a great time. Improve stress levels, better sleep, Communication skills and a better mindset are all effects of being involved in some form of activity. Though it can be intimidating to join a new club or sport, it's all worth it in the end. If you don't know what you want to do, try everything because you never know what you're going to like. You don't have to come in with any knowledge of dance, anything with the equipment we use and anything they teach it all to you. And it's like really welcoming. You just identify what you're interested in. Homestead offers a wide variety of activities. There's something for everybody. Hopefully, you get a better understanding on the benefits of Homestead extracurriculars. Ready to start? Check out the activity page on the Homestead website for more information. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Carly Swymiller. Thank you for the report, Carly. As we head to break, be sure to keep an eye out for a club you may enjoy during the rundown of all the clubs meeting at Homestead over the next week. Stick around, we'll be back shortly. Some big results happened over the past week in Homestead Athletics and one team starts their postseason today. I'll break it down for you later on in Down to the Wire. Hello Homestead, here's this week's club roundup. Meaning today will be K-pop club and young progressives. Monday will be art club and meeting Tuesday will be audio aficionados, yearbook club, film club, students for life and book club. More clubs meeting on Wednesday, will be Creative Writing Club and Philosophy Club, and meeting on Thursday will be Equestrian Club and Anime Club. To get up-to-the-minute updates and additional information, check out the HHS Announcements page on Canvas. Welcome back to HHS In-Depth. We're back on HHS In-Depth. And Sophia, this week's temperature felt more like fall than anything we've had so far. Let's find out how long we have left to enjoy these comfortable conditions. Weather reporter Caroline Burns is in the studio and ready to fill you in on what next week's weather has to offer. That's right, and while tonight is going to be sunny with temps in the 70s during our game against Bishop Dwanger, we can expect the weekend's weather to rise into the mid-70s. This Saturday is going to be perfect temperature with a high of 76 and mostly cloudy conditions, but the night will cool down to a brisk 53. Sunday will be another mild day with the high in the low 70s. However, you may want to grab your blankets because the night will dip down to the high 40s. As for next week, Monday has a high of 70 with partly cloudy skies. After Monday, the sun will come back out as Tuesday is going to be another day in the 70s with mostly sunny skies. Wednesday and Thursday mirror each other as they both have a high of 74, but will drop to the 50s at night. These upcoming weeks may be our last ones filled with warm weather, so be sure to get outside and enjoy them. Taylor, Sophia, back to you. I'm glad fall hasn't hit us for good quite yet. Thank you for the weather report, Caroline. As the year progresses, the skies continue getting darker and darker each day for students as they travel to school. Reporter Emily Adams joins us now from downtown with a story on how this affects students' safety. And Emily, what are some of the implications of the days getting darker sooner? Well, as it starts to get darker, parking lots become progressively more and more dangerous. Luckily, there are ways to stay safe. From leaving football games to late night practices and rehearsals, getting to and from your car seems like a simple task. But what about when it gets dark? The Sergeant of Public Information for the Fort Wayne Police Department elaborates on some tips to stay safe in the dark. To prevent yourself from being a victim is walk with a group. Walk with purpose. Know where you're at look around. If, if you're paying attention and you look like you know what you're doing and you know where you're going, you're going to be less of a target. Sergeant Webb added that one of the biggest mistakes students can make is being distracted. I think one of the first things that anybody can do, young folks and old folks alike, is to, to be aware of their surroundings and what's suspicious and what doesn't fit in. I know there have been studies that they've actually talked to perpetrators and say, how do you choose your victims? And surprisingly, one of the number one things that most of these perpetrators have in common were that they chose people who were disorganized. So you want to be alert, you want to be vigilant, you want to be healthy, you want to be scanning, you want to have your glasses on if you need them, you want to have your contacts in if you need them, you want to have your AirPods out so you can use all your senses and scan your environment. While the danger is real, hopefully these tips will help you stay aware and stay safe. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Emily Adams. All right, thank you, Emily. 
Some of you may remember when the FCC LA Coffee Bar was located in the concession stand by the Spartan Arena. The concession stand is now serving breakfast items and drinks in the morning, but it is not affiliated with FCC LA. The coffee bar relocated to the common area in front of the cafeteria. Recently, I asked FCC LA member Sienna Ponkamong to tell us more about changes to the coffee bar this year. Originally, coffee bar was here, and then we moved to the new ones, but then we got moved back here because the lunch ladies took over the other ones. There wasn't like, get out of here. It was more like, they just did it. Unfortunately, they are not allowed to serve their homemade muffins anymore, but they made some additions to their menu that will hopefully make up for the loss of the bakery items. Plus, the Pop-Tarts are here to stay. This year we're trying to try new items like chai and matcha. We're not really sure how it's going to work, but I think it's going to be good for Coffee Bar. We had to stop selling certain things just because of restrictions. Visit the Coffee Bar any day of the week to grab yourself a pick-me-up before school. Thank you, Sophia. And now it's time for another edition of Down to the Wire. This week, Matthew Auten is in to give us a recap on how our very own Homestead Spartans did in sports this past week. Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm Matthew Auten. We had a thrilling week for all of our fall sports teams, including big results that happened throughout the course of the week, starting with our boys tennis team. Tuesday night, the Spartans passed the big test and defeated the Carroll Chargers 4-1, moving their record to 10-1 on the year. Their next match will be tonight at home for senior night against Culver. Our girls volleyball team traveled to Huntington North and swept them three sets to zero. Madeline Seip led the team with 20 digs, Kate Jackway had 18 assists, and Addie Tyndall had 15 kills. Congratulations and good luck as they will play in the Lafayette Jeff Tournament tomorrow. Our girls golf team was in action on Monday and beat Leo 156 to 203 on senior night at Chestnut Hills. Congratulations ladies and good luck to them as they will compete for their ninth straight sectional championship starting today at Chestnut Hills. Tryouts for the Homestead Bowling Team are set for next Monday and Tuesday, September 18th and 19th. Trials will be from 4 to 5 p.m. each day at Pro Bowl West. If you're interested in bowling and want to play on the Homestead team, don't miss those tryout dates. Moving forward, practices for the team will be on each Monday and Tuesday at Pro Bowl West from 4 to 5 p.m., with the majority of the matches being on Thursdays. And finally, our boys football team took on the Northrop Bruins and dominated them 48 to 13. Michael White and Brett Fox had two touchdowns, and Sam Stewart came up with two sacks. Congratulations. And don't forget our football team is back in action tonight on the road as they will take on the Bishop Dwanger Saints. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. and tonight's theme is Country Night. Congratulations to all sports teams that competed this week. That'll do it for this week's edition of Down to the Wire. Thanks for watching. Sophia Taylor, back to you. Thank you, Matthew, for the update on our fall sports teams. This has been HHS In-Depth. Make sure to check out our socials for updates on the HHS In-Depth team and our upcoming projects. Don't forget to go out and enjoy the football game at Bishop Dwanger tonight. Have a great weekend, Homestead, and we'll see you back here again next week.